Hey, Phil Spencer here, Live Cuisine Ada Minaj, the household chef, and today we're making a brown chicken stock. Stock, what is it? Well, the French say it best. It is le fond de cuisine, or the foundation of cooking. But the actual definition is basically it's a flavorful liquid uh, prepared by simmering bones and or vegetables in water with aromatics until the flavor, aroma, color, and nutrients are extracted. So what are stocks used for? Sauces, soups, and if you really wanna take like your rice and quinoa, apanatra, vegetables, instead of using water, you use the stock. It's amazing. So today we're making a brown chicken stock and we'll be browning some chicken bones and browning the mirepoix and adding a pinsage. Mirepoix, pinsage, what's all that? Ah, very simple. Mirepoix was uh, founded or made by this uh, duke back in the 18th century in France. It consisted of celery, onions, and carrots. But of course, there's been many variations since then. There's also an Asian mirepoix, which is garlic, ginger, and green onions. But the basic mirepoix is celery, carrots, and onion. And so what we mean with the brown mirepoix is we're going to cook it in some oil and caramelize the onions and the carrots and uh, then we'll just add the celery and the pinsage is actually tomato paste and we'll cook that in to give it a beautiful rusty golden brown color so the plan for today and i'll spell this out in the information section as well is to roast the bones and then after we roast the bones we'll put them in a pot of cold water bring that up to a boil and then to a simmer and uh, while we're waiting for that to happen we're going to go ahead and brown the mirepoix so basically the first hour of simmering the bones and then we'll add the mirepoix for an additional hour and then we will add the sachet de pice, which is the, uh, the, basically the sack of spices, which is the aromatics, which finishes off the stock. And then I'll show you how to strain it and store it. So let's get going. Preparing the pan to roast the chicken bones, it's called conditioning the pan. We take about a teaspoon of vegetable oil and kind of smear it all over the pan. And then we preheat the oven to 425 and heat it up for five minutes. So once the pan is conditioned, we go ahead and put the chicken bones back into the pan, into the oven. And it'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to brown them. You do need to flip them over uh, from time to time to get a nice good brown on them. And these are chicken bones from a chicken I just broke down and actually had in the freezer and thawed out. Works great. So here's our mirepoix. And it's, of course, it's bigger chunks than normal because we are making a stock with it. And uh, there goes the uh, tomato paste and the onion skin, which I'll put in later as well. And one of the great tricks I learned about the uh, tomato paste is to put it in the freezer and use a can opener and open both ends. And then when you need it, you can push it through and cut off just what you need, just like I did there. A sachet de pice, and it's very simple. Uh, the cheesecloth is shown. Uh, normally you'll use that if you're putting it into a soup or a sauce, but uh, since we're going to strain it out, there's no need to use the cheesecloth. So it's very simple. Just some thyme, garlic, peppercorns, bay leaf, and some parsley stems. There's those roasted chicken bones with a beautiful brown color. We're gonna take those, transfer them to a pot full of cold water and we'll put that heat on high, try and get it to a boil as quickly as we can, and then reduce it to a simmer. And uh, save that pan that we roasted the chicken in. We'll discuss that in just a little bit. So now as we're waiting for that water to boil, it's time to start to brown our mirepoix. We'll take a tablespoon of oil and heat that up in a medium heat, and then we're going to add the onions and the carrots. And the goal here is to caramelize them, turn them a nice golden brown, and once that happens, it's time to add the celery. And once the celery goes in, the celery won't brown because it's got such a high water content. So what you're looking for is for it to start to wilt. And once that happens, it's time to add our pinsage, which is our tomato paste. And we'll add that and gradually stir it in and mix it in and cook it out till we have the whole mixture is a beautiful rust brown color. So here we have the almost finished brown mirepoix and going back to that pan, see all the, that's called the fond in the pan, that beautiful remnants from the roasting of the, uh, the chicken bones. We're going to add some stock water to that and we'll do what's called deglaze the pan. Just try and get all those bits off that pan and get it into liquid form and then we're going to pour it into our mirepoix. And once in the mirepoix we'll just go ahead and uh, cook that down until it's a nice syrupy consistency. 
Yeah, and just here to show you how the pan was deglazed and all that goodness going into the pan. And uh, I've lowered the heat down to medium at this point as well and just keep stirring until it reduces into the syrupy sauce. And then once that's all done, we'll remove it from heat. So here you can see the stock did come to a boil and I've reduced it to a simmer now. And I'm going to skim off the impurities about every 15 minutes. So you'll see these uh, white little bubbles that come to the top. Those are the impurities. You want to skim those out. Two methods, the way I've just done there. Or you can spin the stock around and uh, put your skimmer right along the edges and pick up the debris that way. Also, a spoon works well if you don't have one of these skimmers. About every 15 minutes or so, it's good to skim the impurities. And here you'll see I'm just picking out a little bit of the fat with a spoon as well, just to take out some of the fat for a cleaner stock. So now that the stock has been at a simmer for one hour, uh, it's time to add the mirepoix, the browned mirepoix. So we'll throw that in the pot, give it a nice stir, and we're gonna go for one more hour with the mirepoix in there. And uh, after that point, we'll add the aromatics for the last 30 minutes. What you see there is I've carefully placed the stock pot on just about half of that flame. And what that does, is it creates a much more rolling simmer for better uh, even cooking of the stock. And uh, from time to time, you'll still even need to skim uh, still, even with the mirepoix in there. Okay, so now we've been simmering for two hours. It's time to add the sachet de pisse, the aromatics, and those will go for the last 30 minutes. And then preparing to strain, I use uh, basically two strainers and a very large uh, bowl to catch the uh, stock in. And it's also really hot. I need two strainers, I spill a lot. <laughs> but anyway, after we get all the stock in there, we'll slowly lift the strain, the strained uh, vegetables and chicken out and uh, discard those. Now I plan to uh, use the stock for later, so I've created an ice bath. And what I'm gonna do is put the, uh, the hot stock in there and uh, I'm going to cool it off. I'm also gonna skim it a little bit because there's still a little bit that made it through those strainers. So I like to spin and skim. Uh, that cools it off, cools the stock off a lot more quickly. And then we'll transfer it to bowls and put it in the refrigerator. Now the stock is good for about seven days in the fridge. And uh, after seven days, you can pull it out and uh, bring it to a boil. And then you can put it back in the fridge. It's good for another seven days. Or you can freeze it for up to probably three months or longer. My two favorite uses for this stock is after cooking chicken in the pan with the fawn in the pan, I add a little bit of chicken stock to create unbelievable sauces. And also it makes for an amazing way to cook rice. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.